put the tendies, put the tendies in the bag. Boom. What do you got here? Is a bag full of tendies. Oh, I just touched my fucking sweatpants. Shit! These were the things I had in my cupboard at one point after a day of work. I threw them together, and boom. So, step one, apply the olive oil, apply it. How much? I don't know, just guess it. Second step, marinate the tendies. There it is. It should look like piss. When it looks like piss, success. See that? But a piss, you're good to go. Every single tendy should be moist. For seasoning, I guess there's two things. The first thing is the legendary Mrs. Dash. Garlic and herb. Uh, can you use any other kinds of seasoning? No, you can't. Nope. It has to be Mrs. Dash because, I'll get you guys a close up here. You know why? The texture of that? Yeah? That's the texture you want. If you actually want decent tendies, you have to follow this step by step. Put it in there. How much do you put in there? Just eyeball it. Boom. There it is. Then you close it again. Now this is this is where it takes time. This is where it takes years and years of practice. Why is it like this? Focus. Penn State. Focus. 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 There it is. You see this, chat? Look at this, right here. Boom. Look at that. The lighting is so bad. <laughs> what you should have after you mix them together is olive oil and garlic and herb moistened chicken tendies. What's the last thing, Ryan? The final thing is... This is the important part. How much do you put in there? Yes. Have to use the seasoned... 4C breadcrumbs. Now, why do you put breadcrumbs in there? Because you cook it in a pan with olive oil and basically you're essentially pan frying the chicken tendies. You're not putting these on here with a little bit of Pam because that's basically a seared dry chicken tendy. We are pan frying our chicken tenders. Feel that? It's a lot of breadcrumbs, right? Not enough. Keep going. Keep on going. Boom, there it is. Now, more olive oil, how much? I don't know, just guess it. Here the breadcrumbs. You mix it up until that sound goes away. To get that sound to go away, you need to add more olive oil, okay? Each chicken tendy should be fully coated in breadcrumbs and then you're good to go. Nothing happened, chat. Nothing happened. Nothing happened. Run! Hold on. Who pissed themselves? Son of a bitch! Are you kidding me? We're out of olive oil! Oh, this is unfortunate. Fuck! There we go. There it is. We'll continue on because uh, time is money. Uh, a step I forgot, put the lid on the olive oil. Actually, no, I was grabbing it for a reason. So. If you look at these tendies, you'll see that some of the breadcrumbs are clumped together. Look at that. It's hard to see because my lighting sucks. Feel those breadcrumbs? You need a little bit more olive oil. This should smell like garlic and herb and excessive amounts of olive oil. That's what you want. But we're good to go. That's it. Just olive oil, breadcrumbs, and tendies. Now, I got, I gotta move you guys without completely fucking everything up. Oh, look at this, chat. <sighs> All right, we're in the sink, that's good. Everything's good when you're in the sink. Look at this, chat. Boom! We're gonna use larger burner because it's a larger pan, chat. See? Now, I like to use a medium heat. I have never made, oh, I should get this off the stove. I have never, ever made this. Um, kinda hot. I've never made this on an electric stove, so I think medium high, i.e. in between medium and high, right there, you can't see it, because why would you be able to see it? Put it on. This is where it gets satisfying. So, normally, 
People use Pam and shit for when they're cooking uh, stuff on a stove. I guess this is essentially... I've never I've never looked at the actual terminology for this kind of stuff. I assume it's like a pan fry. So what I'll do is I'll put enough olive oil to cover the base of it. Um, you're not filling it up like crazy, just like a dab of olive oil. So basically, push it around that much. See that? Not really. Basically, it's a thin coating along the entire bottom. Watch this chat. This move here. Love to see it, boys. Or not see it, in your case. Cover the bottom. Boom, a little dab. That was a lot, wasn't it? And then, hopefully you guys can hear this. Here's what one of the tendies should look like. This is a risky move here. Like a child. Look at that tendy. Look at it! See how the entire uh, surface area of this chicken tendy is covered in breadcrumb and seasoning? Look at that. You're not putting on this heavy frying shit. It's just breadcrumb and seasoning. Olive oil. Then you put it in. Boom. I forgot how long it takes electric stoves to heat up, so this might take a little bit of time. Here's another example, Chad. Oh, look at- oh, this one's good. This one's really good. Look at this tendy. Look at that. Completely covered. So essentially, that's what you're looking at. There you go. Look at them go. So, in terms of amount of olive oil, if we get down a little bit closer here, boom. And that is what you're going for, chat. Spatula is a waste of a giant utensil. Use a, use a fork. You're not scraping the bottom like a fucking loser. You're just picking up a tendy and going. I'm gonna do this first person. Ready? It's me, break the vices. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Ooh, whoop. Might be a little bit too hot. If you are wondering about how long does it take to cook these, uh, I'd say like five minutes on each side, maybe. That was like, what, four minutes? Roughly? Roasted! Oh yeah, oh, you hear that? Ooh, sizzly, sizzly. Uh, three minutes on each side, twice, or two minutes. So, act, time out, time out. Three minutes to start on the first side, flip it, another three minutes, and then about two minutes, two minutes. So you're flipping it four times, you're cooking each side twice. If there's not enough olive oil, i.e. there's no proper, uh, like, frying bubbles, add more olive oil. But because I've done this a million times, I know what I'm doing, so. They're good to go. So if you cut one open, oh, this is a ballsy move. Ballsy move. Look at that. Perfect. Cut her off. That's it, boys. I'll get these on a plate. Now, I think I was using this one for raw chicken. I'm not gonna use okay, there's actually, there's one thing that's missing. Um, now, these are amazing with no condiments. These are amazing with uh, just plain, if you will. But, Frank's Red Hot. We'll get these onto a plate. Nice. Uh, just because I'm super paranoid about undercooked chicken and getting sick, let's put it onto a plate. So, boop. Listen to that. Listen to that grizzle. Listen to the grizzle. Crispy. It's gotta be crispy. But here's a secret. If you want to, you can stack the tendies like this. Stack them up. Because... Helps keep them warm for longer. Pro moves. But, 
in the case of art, we'll separate them. There it is. Chicken tendies. I don't know if they're actually focused. So the pan will be filled with what looks like shit. This is essentially breadcrumbs and olive oil. So sometimes if you're feeling fancy, you can drizzle it. You can glaze your tendies. Looks gross, Ryan. Oh, part of the experience. Look at that drizzle. Ooh. It looks sad and depressing, but look at that. Look at the perfectly cooked chicken tent. I gotta get like an HD quality picture of this because the lighting in here is dead. Actually, hold on. Frank's Red Hot is needed. I am... I had stomach ulcers in college, and I think a good reason was probably a lot of Frank's Red Hot, so... Watch yourself. Blaze it on there. Boom. There you go. Bon appetit. What you can eat is a ketchup sandwich. So a ketchup sandwich is... bread and ketchup. Now, when you do a ketchup sandwich, there's one rule of thumb, you cannot use fancy bread because it ruins the integrity and the ratio of ketchup and bread. So, go with your basic split top white enriched bread. The cheaper it is, the better it's gonna be. So here you go. This is a perfect size too. You don't wanna overdo it because the carbs can be a little bit too much. That's about the size of the bread you're looking at. Again, everything's too bright. There you go. There's only one kind of ketchup that works on a ketchup sandwich. I've tried barbecue. No. I've tried Hunt's ketchup. Absolute shit. I've tried name brand ketchup. Or not name brand. Generic ketchup. It's terrible. Heinz is the only ketchup. Heinz regular tomato ketchup. The one without high fructose corn syrup is too uh, watery. It's too vinegary. It's not sweet enough. So get the one that has high fructose corn syrup. Right there it is. Boom. Maybe see it? High fructose corn syrup. So, this is all brand new. The first squeeze. Now it is important when you're using ketchup for the first squeeze to get rid of any liquids because the liquid will ruin your sandwich. It'll ruin the, ruin the integrity of the sandwich. I love napkins. There it is. Now, this, this is magic, ready? The secret to a good ketchup sandwich is you do not put ketchup on both pieces of bread. You put it on one and you start by outlining the crust and then you move into the center. You cover all surface area. Now watch the precision here, ready? Hopefully I don't fuck this up. I haven't done this in years. Oh, see, too much, too much. See that, boom, over the outside, come in. And then you just do a little bit of this, ready? This is a bad bottle of ketchup. It builds up too much and then there's too much that comes out right away. Look at that, too much. There it is. Perfect. Now the secret is once you put the piece of bread on, the top piece, you don't want any ketchup to, to spill out. That's gross. I, I fucked up the sandwich. So you put it on, boom, boom. A little bit of maneuvering. Now if you look at the sandwich, First person. You have maybe a little bit hanging out on one side, maybe a little bit on this side, right there. Look at that, that's perfect. That's what you should see the entire way around, right there. That's incredible. Look at that. Ketchup sandwich and uh, chicken tendies. Gourmet gamer meals. You got protein, you got carbs, a little bit of fiber, you got yourself some sugar, and you got yourself uh, a lot of fats from the olive oil. Great meal for those on a budget, great meal for athletes, great meal for uh, rich people. Boom. That's good shit, man. If you take a plain hand seared chicken tender, which is just, I don't know, a little bit of uh, 
seasoning, a little bit of dry rub, maybe a little bit of like, you know, a marinade of some sort. And then you take the other end, which is a fried chicken, and they fuck and have a child, it's this. It is the perfect middle ground. Is it healthy? Probably not. But it's right in the middle of a fried chicken and a grilled chicken, whatever. So, right there, man. Good shit. Wash down that ketchup sandwich. 